And welcome to the daily space weather. We're looking at the sun and 193 angstroms here. And uh, we're back down to zero sunspots, folks. 10.7 centimeter radio flux is at 69. Relativistic electron flux is extremely, excessively high. There's all kinds of satellite charging hazards. We do see some activity rising right here on the eastern limb near the equator. And more. So strap in. This is just under eight hours of solar activity here in 304 angstroms. There is a gigantor filament that looks like it's collapsed back onto the photosphere there in the uh, northwestern limb. Otherwise, pretty low solar activity. Uh, we, we are in geomagnetic unrest conditions here at a Kp of 4. And we're going to cover a lot of stuff, so let's keep it moving. Again, sunspot 2748 has evaporated. And back to zero sunspots, folks. Zero sunspots. Now, if you, if you were a paid patron, you would have gotten this update probably only minutes after I got it. And we're talking about the greater than 2 mega electron volt electron flux here. The warning level is 1,000, and the peak level we saw yesterday was 87,889. In other words, nearly 100 times the alert level was shown. So if you're not a patron yet, become one. And for $9.99 a month, you'll be able to see these updates as fast as our paid viewers. Don't join at the $1 level. I'm warning you right now, it's going to slowly go away. And by Halloween, it will be gone entirely. You could also fund us via PayPal. And uh, for all of you viewers out there who want to be on a credits crawl, send an email to smashomash at gmail.com, and we're going to put that together soon. Also, if you're in the market for CBDs, for instance, check out the links below the video. The Hemp Lucid Spaced Out Campaign, specifically formulated for our spaced out viewers. They're offering you 30% off on the CBD hemp seed oil suspension in 1,000 milligram, as well as sales on some Kalki products, the MCT oil version, and the water-soluble isoterp certified THC-free products. So check out that if you want to support the channel that way. And looking at the real-time solar wind, we see an unexpected uptick in the solar wind speed here, up to 535 kilometers per second. Solar wind density remains quite low and diffuse at 1.67. And we see possibly a sputtering coronal hole magnetic connection going on here again. Although it looks like it's in the process of disconnecting, that's something to watch throughout the day. If it approaches the 180 degree line and stays there for an extended period. And there's the data from the ACE spacecraft. Looking quite corroborative. Again, 10.7 centimeter radio flux still at 69. As we've seen a double or possibly a triple dip there at the end of cycle 24. And uh, my forecast still stands, folks, that 25 will begin this current month, September 2019. Let's talk about National Preparedness Month. I'm going to talk about David Dubine's new book, Climate Revolution. As I'm cited in the book, we're talking about solar wind here and the magnetosphere movies that we cover every day, and we are cited in the book. So we're going to start featuring, featuring a little teaser each day about David's book, David and also uh, Bill and Richard Porter's book, that is, Climate Revolution, The Grand Solar Minimum, Understand, Prepare, Adapt, and Thrive. We'll leave links to where you can purchase this. It's 13 bucks. And speaking of magnetosphere movies, here's four hours of data. First, we're going to look at the density and then the pressure. As we try to archive four hours of data daily, we've only missed one or two days here where the data was not available. This model, courtesy University of Michigan. Shout out University of Michigan. How's it going in Michigan, Wolverines? Here's the pressure. Let 
and we do see some what you would call perturbations here. Uh, there is a massive electron bridge going on that's uh, that was left behind, sort of, so to speak, uh, due to that coronal hole wind stream. And that's why we're seeing such high levels of relativistic electrons and generally high electron flux levels. We'll get to it in a moment. There we see some bumps in the road there, magnetically speaking. And let's move on to ground geospace magnetic perturbations. And there's the delta B, otherwise known as changes in the Earth's B field. For those of you not familiar with magnetohydrodynamics, the B field is the field that goes through the magnet. So from the perspective of the solar system, you live on the sun's B field. The interplanetary magnetic field, as it passes current through your planet. We see some pretty big perturbations here over the Canadian North Pole. Significant ones over the Siberian North Pole, as well as the South Pole as it creeps into the Indian Ocean. Again, KP index is at four geomagnetic unrest conditions. Here's the ionosphere movie, looking at six hours here. And it's, it's looking a little anomalous out there, folks. There's a lot, of, a lot of anomalies and errors going on right now. Let's go to the latest frame. And there's the image from 8 o'clock universal time, looking pretty normal, at least in that still mode. Still haven't seen any B-class flares, and perhaps I was incorrect, expecting a B-class flare, excuse me, a B-class flare to be kicked off by that sunspot. Still could happen, but it's becoming less and less likely, as it's no longer a sunspot. Now it's just a plage. Here we see this dip in the electron flux. And this is not particularly expected to stay dipped like this. As it is approaching midnight for these satellites, this is something to watch over the next few hours. We'll get the video up as quickly as possible. Here are the charging hazards, and we're seeing increased charging hazards all over the place. And it's all about the electrons, folks. Let's look at where things are located in the solar system real quick. And there's where things will be in one week. All sort of conjunctive activity happened here. Conjunctions between Earth, Sun, Mercury, Venus, Mars, etc. throughout the daytime moving on. And we're going to skip the Space Weather Enthusiast dashboard and talk about the relativistic electron fluence. And there you can see it's most recently at extremely high levels, about as high as we typically ever see it get. Again, uh, this is over 87 times the alert level, where it's normally at 1,000 pulse flux units is the alert level. We were at over 87,000 pulse flux units. Were you aware that I'm a shockingly fast bike rider? Well, check out this ride I did yesterday. It went from northeastern Arkansas to where I'm located here in Lehigh Valley, Pennsylvania in 55 minutes and 6 seconds. How did I do that? Well, it's easy. You just get a maximum speed of 50,477.4 miles per hour with an average speed of 1,018 miles per hour. And that is how you go fast on a bike. I did not alter any of these images, folks. I just screenshotted them. And we are looking for sponsors for the 2020 cycling team. If you want to see a guy ride 50,000 miles an hour on a bike, well, I've got your rider. Season is totally open. We're looking to do road and track time trials. Ha <laughs> ha. So yeah, follow us on Instagram. You may see some things that will make you scratch your head. Things that make you go, hmm. Things that make you go, hmm, check out the GOES magnetometer. It looks like the GOES 15 is back online, but it's showing up with 200 nanotesla, uh, and uh, we're not believing the data, as the level of electrons up there is such that it's returning a bunch of nonsense. It looks like the GOES 14 is still doing okay. Look at the way they expanded the scale to account for this. This just happens automatically, by the way. 
let's just ignore that and move on to the gong too. Turns out that the polarity boundary crossing is going to happen faster than we expected. You can see those fields being maneuvered around and there is an active region rising there so there is some activity about to be kicked off here. So uh, despite solar minimum conditions there's plenty of stuff going on and we will keep you apprised of the situation. How about the earthquake rundown before we get to hurricane stuff? So in the past 24 this one is about 23 hours ago. 4.9 hits New Zealand. Please leave a comment if you felt that quake. 5.7 in Tonga. That's got to be close to the largest quake. That one at the surface. What else do we have here? A 4.2 at Japan. A 5.0 at Indonesia. 4.9 at Japan. 4.6 in Indonesia. 4.9 at Indonesia, 4.7 at Fiji, that one at extreme depth, as we've been seeing quakes at five and 600 kilometers deep there regularly for months and months. 4.8 at Indonesia. Here's a 4.9 at Argentina, that one's at depth. Heads up Western South America. You are in the crosshairs for a large quake, and if you're any place, that's an earthquake risk zone. Please have a plan. Be an asset, not a liability if a disaster happens. Because if you're wondering when the cavalry is going to arrive, it's probably because you're the cavalry. Here's a 4.5 at Japan. This one coming in about eight hours ago. Here's a 5.0 at the Kuril Islands. That one's south of Kamchatka north of Japan. 5.1 at Chile, 4.5 at the Norwegian Sea, there's a location of that one very far north in between Iceland and Svalbard, and a 5.1 at Vanuatu coming in while we did show prep. Here's your volcano rundown, and we will talk about carbonyl sulfide. Just not in this video. There's too much to cover, and we got to get the information out about space and hurricanes. So here's the list. We see a Biko exploding and producing a 10,000 foot ash plume. Mount Aso, possible activity. Cloud size unknown. Dakono exploding. 5,000 foot ash plume there. Popocatapetl back on the list, back to exploding. 22,000 foot ash plume there. I'm sure it's sending plenty of carbonyl sulfide into the atmosphere. <laughs> how about some sulfur pre how about some inorganic sulfur precursors folks inorganic sulfur precursors fuego apparently some new emissions there sab and kaya not identifiable in satellite data probably a cloudy day in peru and nevados de chilean intermittent puffs of volcanic ash check out weather.gov if you need to see your local weather alerts and if you have some local alerts such as, hey, evacuate your town because you're going to get 20 inches of rain in southern, southeastern South Carolina, please evacuate if you're told to evacuate. Nobody wants to rescue from waste deep water. Checking out lightningmaps.org. See the lightning situation as these heavy bands of rain have started to pummel South Carolina. My advice, get the hell out of Dodge if you're in these zones that are predicting 20 plus inches of rain. No place can stand 20 plus inches of rain, folks. Nothing is able to drain that amount of water. And these coastal regions are, uh, the way they drain, there's gonna be storm surge, etc. Here's the pressure map, courtesy windy.com. We'll let this advance as this storm has been doing exactly what we've been predicting it to do for days starting from before it even intensified to a Category 5, and everybody freaked out and lost their you-know-what over it. As you can see, the low pressure is actually growing here. We do have stratospheric inputs. We'll show you the wind maps in a minute. And there it's finally moving off of the coast here. Late Friday afternoon. So Virginia Beach is going to be among the last areas to be hit, assuming it continues on its current path. And let's look at more stuff. 
So here it is on null school, and we are looking at the surface winds right now. We normally use this to look at the jet streams, so let's bring that up. And we see the jet stream inputs continue here, and the jet stream not dipping low enough to push this thing out to the east as forecasted yesterday. It's going to ride right up the coast, just as the GF model, GFS models predict, and just as I predict. Here are the jet streams of the Western world. Whoops, there we go. Convective forces at play. There's an anticyclone in the, in the South Atlantic there. Um, yeah, convective forces. Meridional jet stream flow, doubled up jet streams in the Southern Hemisphere. Pushing extremely cold air to weird places, pushing extremely hot air to weird places. Look at that S-shaped bend in the uh, in the jet stream there, like, like, like a backwards S over uh, northern Siberia. And here's the AccuWeather Doppler. You can see those bands, extreme bands, as well as really, really heavy thunderstorms off the coast of North Carolina right now. Uh, there's going to be beach erosion to end all beach erosion, folks. This is exactly the kind of storm that will just wreck all of the beaches, even Georgia, but especially South Carolina and North Carolina. Those beaches are going to be toasted. And it's going to be a lot of time until that stuff gets fixed. Here's the current image of Dorian in shortwave radiation. We use this to see clouds at nighttime. It's not completely accurate, but it's pretty good. If you use this, just uh, Keep in mind the day-night terminator will mess it up when you switch to visible satellite. Anyway, we don't see a, a particularly well-formed eye wall there as this thing is going to start to, uh, to weaken as half the storm will be over land. And we're hoping that cold water that's off the coast of North Carolina helps to break it up a little bit. Here's the water vapor map view, the zoomed out view. And you can see that dry mass of air is just holding that storm in place. It only really has one place to go, and it looks like a little dry air is wrapping around there. So this thing could de-intensify a little more quickly. Let's hope so. And here's the zoomed-in water vapor map view. Not a whole lot to say about that, except if you're told to get out of Dodge, get out of Dodge. It's National Disaster Preparedness Month, folks. Don't get stranded in a flooded location where you can't leave. Leave, come back. You can't build a new you, but you can build a new house. Here's the Tropical Tidbits rundown. And you can see still predicting uh, around 20 inches of rain there in coastal South Carolina. And it looks like the low is going to be out of there again by Friday afternoon moving off the coast of Virginia Beach. We're going to integrate the that is censored and that is a hole in the ground section because we don't have that much more to cover. Although we do like to talk about search engines and how to get objective search results. You get search ob search results objectively by going to DuckDuckGo, the search engine that won't track you, won't store your personal information, won't tra travel around and bother you with ads and creep you out and make you wish that you uh, didn't even own a computer. Do you follow us on social media? How about Facebook? Facebook.com slash smash a mash. How about on Gab? Gab.com slash smash a mash. How about on Minds? That's Minds.com slash smash a mash. And we've lost our black theme, but the cool thing about Minds is that it's open source. It won't shadow ban you. It won't attempt to deperson or deplatform you. It won't in involve you in any sort of Malthusian nonsense. And uh, oh, we've gained back most of our subscribers that we lost. Cheers. Check it out, Minds.com, the future of social media, completely unlike Facebook. And if you enjoy the content here on YouTube, please like and subscribe here. Press the notification bell. Most importantly, become a patron. You will see our content before everybody else. And certainly, thanks, Smash Team. Let's look at some articles. Nonsense, nonsense alert. Nonsense alert. Here's the science that links Hurricane Dorian's features to climate change. And when we say climate change, we mean global warming. This is the fundamental misunderstanding 
of the way weather and climate work. We're not going to talk too much about the article, except that every time a major hurricane happens, somebody claims it's the most this or the most that ever, that carbon dioxide is making the planet warmer, and that, well, that they don't understand atmospheric physics. <laughs> anyway, uh, links to this article below the video, as well as to Tony Heller's videos, where he debunks this nonsense on a regular basis. Let's talk about, oh, I don't know, let's talk about Greenland's propaganda meltdown. I'll play Hello, this is Tony Heller from Real Climate Science Day. I'll play a little clip as Tony likes to uh, talk about real science. As he's been in charge of creating computer models, and he's probably not in that industry anymore because he kept making ones that work and provide observational data. This were strangely silent during the previous two years when huge amounts of snow accumulated on Greenland's surface. Because, you know, we got record snow in the Northern Hemisphere in the 2017 to 2018 winter, and then we got record snow in the Northern Hemisphere in the 2018 to 2019 winter, and basically the Almanac is predicting another winter just like last year. What do you think? Leave a comment. Let's look at the depths of human stupidity by seeing what people are searching for on Google. If you want to do it yourself, check out trends.google.com and wade through a bunch of horribly, horribly written code. Thanks to Google's Analytics. Analytics? Put in Google Analytics. Putting the anal in analytics. National Rugby. Oh, the Wu-Tang Clan and the RZA are back on number two. Yeah. Cheers. Shout out Wu-Tang Clan. Ooh, ha, ooh, ha. Nintendo Switch. September 4th and 5th earthquake. Ma magnitude 4... I don't know why that's a thing. Not even the biggest earthquake of the past 24. And let's move on to more human stupidity. Like this New Jersey genius who broke into Taylor Swift's mansion in Rhode Island. He politely took off his shoes and then hung out. He was apparently looking for Taylor, who probably wasn't there. Got past a security guard who didn't hear the burglar alarm that he set off when he scaled a wall. What a dummy. Another New Jersey resident, today's dum-dum of the day, Richard McEwen of Milford. I could ride my bike to his hometown. I just choose not to, because New Jersey sucks. President Trump tweeting some more ingenious things, such as the capabilities of one of our spy satellites. Yes, USA-224, an optical reconnaissance satellite, has had some of its capabilities leaked via this classified document. Here's the photo, if you'd, like to, <laughs> if you'd like to look at it yourself. It's a photo of Iran's failed rocket launch and their damaged everythings. Uh, links to this article also in the description. As well as to information about USA 224, Melior Diabolus Chem Cies, which stands for Better the Devil You Know. It's all symbolic, folks. It's all symbolic. And if you've stayed tuned all the way through, you get the bonus section, the 171 angstrom view. We're going to zoom way in here, as there's a filament that we did see earlier in 304 angstroms. There it is up in the northwest. And again, it looks like it fell back onto the photosphere. There's this active region rising over here on the east, just south of the equator. Probably cycle 24 activity, just like this sunspot was. And now it's degraded. We're back to zero sunspots. And we are out of here. Thanks for tuning in, everybody. Please visit the links in the description. Support the channel if you see fit. Press like and subscribe. Press notification. Share on your social media. Stare at the sun. When you're doing so, don't drink it. If you drink, stare at the sun anyway. Use the proper instruments like the STO and don't drive. And uh, since it'll never be now again, may the solar wind be at your back and the atherosclerosis absent from your veins.